spot to me. I understand. I do it too. Well, you know, that wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been Laura. It has to be the actor that feeds you to come up with something. You're inspired by an actor's presence and a, and a knowledge of their ability. Choosing the part in Mask was the first of many difficult career decisions for Laura. They were going to pay me for the time a really wonderful salary for like a first lead role. Um, and I was also offered two weeks work in this cameo and mask for two thousand dollars or whatever it was um, my agents told me that I had to do this fabulous lead role teen movie and I said I can't they're often pressured by agents and managers and studios and producers and so on and it's hard to make the right decision it really shaped a decision um, process for me in my career about the kind of actor I wanted to be and the kind of career I wanted to have. When we return, Laura wins her first starring role. I'm Mary Steenburgen. Back to Intimate Portrait, Laura Dern. Just after I did Mask, I started UCLA and went for two days and got Smooth Talk. Directed by Joyce Chopra in 1985, Smooth Talk was the story of a 16-year-old girl on the verge of womanhood, filled with fear and excitement. Joyce was talking about this girl she needed, and she described this long, gangly, blonde, blue-eyed, 16-year-old girl who's smarter than her years, someone who, as an actress, has been around long enough that they can handle some stuff that may be difficult emotionally to deal with. This old soul in this young body, and, and she had this sophistication and savvy and um, intelligence and even a kind of wisdom at times that I was just blown away by. The character is tortured a lot and depressed a lot and very sad and there were a lot of crying scenes expected. When adolescence hit, she was silent, she didn't talk, she was bored all the time, she was withdrawn. Did I hear you right? What did I say wrong? You stink. Yeah, you told me. You don't like my hairspray. I mean, that just stinks that you won't pick up a dish that isn't yours, that you won't pick up one dish for somebody else. I picked up a dish. Let's not fight, okay? I mean, I'm supposed to serve up the bacon and then clear it away, and you just take and take like a princess. Is that it? Is that the system? You shouldn't give me bacon every day. Uh, are you going to lecture me on nutrition? I had this enormous sense of pride that my child got it, and got it like that. For her work in Smooth Talk and Mask, Laura won the 1985 New Generation Award. What shocked me was it is the strongest young kid's personality movie role I've ever seen, except maybe for Jody and Taxi Driver. Smooth Talk, that's one of my favorites of, of Laura. That's the one that I'll always remember her from, uh, that, that the, that, that kind of complexity of somebody so young but so complicated. But I think at the time, I just figured my job was to get as depressed and emotional as possible to do the job. And I didn't know how you stop that thing, you know, when we rap. Smooth talk took a strong emotional toll on Laura. Help came from the teacher who's worked with her ever since. Sandra gave me the greatest gift as an actor I have received other than being raised by the two parents I have. The primary thing that I want to do as a teacher is that the student love what they're doing, that it's a joy, and that they're not, you know, working out of fear. Sandra believes firmly in acting as a gift to heal. And she believes firmly that the better the person, the better the talent. I mean, not to sound <laughs> woo-woo, not to sound like but you could tell while they were talking that there was a really amazing connection in terms of art going on between the two of them. And I had heard the stories of Montgomery Clift and James Dean, not only as a lot of kids growing up wanting to hear about those stars heard, but I was around people who knew them well. 
So I heard very dark stories about great actors who destroyed themselves. And it didn't sound fun, it didn't sound necessary, it didn't sound pretty, and it sounded plain old stupid to me. I have the utmost respect for her because even as an established actress, she still comes to class. She still works on developing herself as an artist. All of a sudden, this teacher came into my life and made me realize that I can choose movies that say something, that mean something to me. Hopefully, they'll mean something to some other people, too. But I connect to them. They teach me something about myself, about people, about life. She debates a long time the moral issue of a film, if she should take it or not, if it is in compliance to her, her, her own belief, her own morality. Laura and Isabella Rossellini became friends on David Lynch's Blue Velvet in 1985. So I was often on the phone with David Lynch, and, and he would tell me who else had joined in. And one day he called me and he said, you know, Laura Dern is going to play Sandy to Ingenue. And I thought, oh, that is very strange, you know. But David does things that are completely surreal. I wouldn't have thought that role request required a blind girl. Because Laura was such a great art actress that I believed in Mask, she was truly blind. The thing that was unusual about this was David hadn't known my previous work. He'd never seen me in a movie. He didn't have a clue if I could act or not, but I was what he wanted for the role. Blue Velvet was distinct and startling and caused strong reactions. Director David Lynch wanted to work with Laura again. This time, she would play a highly charged, sexually free young woman in Wild at Heart with Nicolas Cage. He chose me. He told me he was working on a script. He wanted me to play the part. He wanted mom to play my mom in it. I kept on saying to Laura, you got to do it, Laura, because my, my parents died when I was so young. And just for the sake of that experience, you have to, you have to do it. And she knew it. She was very pleased to be able to, to work with her. It was an incredible and a very, very important challenge for me. Because I had been thought of, I think, more as my character in Blue Velvet and Mask and even Smooth Talk, there's great innocence in that character. In Wild at Heart, I think I am the innocent as well. I think that Sailor and Lula are innocents in a world of great violence and corruption and deceit but she's extremely wild and physical and sexual, and that is an aspect of me too that enjoys feeling free and comfortable with myself. It happened to be a time in my life that I felt rejected. I'd gone through some personal upsets romantically, and I didn't feel good about myself on any level. So it took everything to bring that out. I really believe it made me much more fearless as an actor than I had been before that. When we return, Laura is nominated for an Oscar. I'm Mary Steenburgen. Back to Laura Dern, an intimate portrait. When you walk across the bridge in Rambling Rose, it's the greatest entrance for a character that I've seen in a long, long time in a movie. It's just a great entrance, and you learn all about the character without her ever saying a line walking across the bridge. And from there on, you just get better. You top yourself throughout. Robert Duvall agreed to do it, which was obviously a big deal and very helpful to the movie. And my mother agreed, and Lucas Haas, and so the cast came together. We became close friends really quickly, you know, all of us. The, the whole cast became like a family. He was 14 years old and brilliant and pure and as good as anybody could be. And the chemistry between um, Laura and I uh, was what made it. I mean, she, she made me feel very comfortable. In one scene, 14-year-old Buddy finds himself in bed with Rose, who helps his mother in the house. You didn't put my hand inside her night yet. No, you can't. Not to eat something else. He scares me. Can't fool around with him. Ooh, not with that man. If I ever do anything like that again, he'll fire me. Rose, can I see what the nipple on is like? Buddy, what has come over you? Childlike you asking such things. 
I'm curious, Rose. No, buddy, get your hand away. Quit it. Get your hand off of me, buddy. My favorite.